In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the five levels of authority and why they matter to your business. So we all know in the last few years, if you haven't been hiding somewhere, that the world has changed and a lot of the ways that you want to get more clients, grow your business, is actually done online. Those people who are holding out and saying, no, 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 I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way, in person, in person, in person, uh, are now realizing that that isn't the case. It's quite difficult to just do in person. Online gives you the opportunity to reach more people and nurture more people than you can do physically as one individual. So I'm gonna show you the five levels of authority and how they work and how they can help you. When you understand these, it can help you. It can save you a lot of time. It can save you a lot of heartache, a lot of frustration. It can stop you chasing followers and help you realize that there's a better way to market your business and make more money using your online channels. So let's have a look. So this is my diagram to help you understand it with my cartoon characters. And you'll see that I've got uh, six people on various journeys up some steps. And uh, this is gonna explain the different ways you can think about how you use online to sell what you do. So top here, we have the influencer. We're all familiar with who influencers are. They're people who command large audiences and tell their audience to do things and they go and do it. Reality check for 99% of business owners, it's not you. This is an elite group of people who can gather large followings and get them to take action. Now, lots of businesses, lots of individuals spend a lot of time trying to get to this position. They think that to make their business, business viable, they have to be one of those people. To make their business profitable, they have to be one of those people. It's not true. You don't need to be an influencer to reach uh, an audience and monetize that audience and sell what you do. Whether that's a consulting service, a coaching service, graphic design, copywriting, training, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're selling your services, you do not need to be an influencer. You do not need millions of followers to sell your services online. So influencer is the top of the tree. One step down from there, we have the thought leader. Now the thought leader is somebody who has wide influence in a targeted market. Wide influence in a targeted market, like a, almost like a micro influencer. People hang on their words, people listen to them and people respect them. And so they get business speaking gigs and engagements and, and consulting gigs because they have a big audience and command of a market. They're like a market leading voice. And again, some people think that to get there, that's where the money is. That's how they make the money. Yes, you can make money there, but it isn't the only route. Now, the pursuit of those two top tier levels of authority in our online world, the pursuit of those from a cold start is really expensive. Most people take steps to move towards that and they're profitable at each stage. But sometimes what happens is people think, oh, I've got to get there, I've got to get there, I've got to get there. And so they invest significant sums in trying to pursue something and miss the fact that they could have been in profit halfway up the staircase. And instead, they're sinking money after pounds and pounds and pounds, hundreds of pounds, thousands of pounds, tens of thousands of pounds into trying to reach this status. Now, here's the, the reality of these two groups of people. You can't force yourself into those positions. You can't buy yourself into those positions because those people have ascended to those levels of authority because other human beings have engaged, got their vibe, got their value, and understand and have built a, they've built a following. 
You can't short circuit that. You can have a few gimmicks, you can do a few viral videos, but it's not gonna cement an audience and monetize it. It takes time to monetize an audience in that way. So let's look at some of the other levels of authority. So actually, before we look at the next one, you'll notice I've got a person here not even on a step. There's nobody on the step. Well, there's one person not even on a step. That might be you. You might not be taking social media and online seriously. You may be dabbling in it. You may be inconsistent in it. You may be saying, it's not for me. Well, I got some bad news for you. If you are not embracing online in some form, you are going to be left behind. Whatever generation you were born in, and I'm, <laughs> I'm in the 80s generation, I was born in the 80s, I, I recognize I cannot be left behind because the generation that's being born now only know online. So for your business to have any longevity, it's got to get into the space of being online. Now, if you're looking to retire in the next five years, switch this off. You don't need this. You can ride out your network, ride out your referrals, ride out your Rolodex, and you'll be fine if you're retiring in the next five years. But if you're not, you cannot be, uh, not afford to be on one of these levels of authority. You cannot afford not to be. So if you're not using LinkedIn, if you're not on Instagram, if you're not using outreach of some kind, if you're not going to email, if you're not doing anything online to market and get more clients in your business, if you're not doing it and you're, or you're not doing it consistently, you're screwed. Sorry, <laughs> I'll just tell you how it is. Uh, because that's the way the world is going. We've seen it because of a crisis, how it's shifted. And that's only going to accelerate as my generation gets older and the generation below grow up and take more dominance in the workplace, the decision making and all of those things. So you need to wake up and realize not being on the levels of authority is a mistake. So hopefully you're still with me. I haven't upset you all with that. Um, the next level of authority is the commodity trader. So the commodity trader, you will have met these people. You'll have met these people on social media. You'll have met these people in your inbox. These are people who just pitch. They're not interested in relationships. They're not interested in any level of authority, really. What they really want is to just sell stuff. And so they don't do take any time. It's like sell, 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 sell. You see this in your inbox. You see this on your social media inboxes. You see it on your social media feeds. They're just sell, 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 sell. Now, the honest truth of this is if you do this, you will get some success. You will make some money. But you will never build an audience. You will never build an audience. Or you'll build a very tiny one. And none of them will see your value, or very few of them will see your value. You will be selling on price and features. In other words, you'll be selling based on how much your, your customers or clients feel that the deliverables, the, the actual actions of your work are worth, rather than the value that you bring. So commodity traders, no relationship, no, very little authority. It's just buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. The next one is you have the socialite seller, the socialite seller. So these have a level of authority, have a level of relationship. They engage on platforms. They interact with people. They've built a little community of a little network, their own little bubble of contacts. And they're a great very sociable person on LinkedIn and all the other channels, and they're great relationship builders. But their limitation is the size of their relationship. The limitation on them is actually their ability to hold all those relationships together. They don't have the ability to scale that up because there's only so many hours in the day, there's only so many people they can talk to. So the socialite seller, as leveraging relationship to sell. So they're leveraging their relationship, interacting with people, doing all the great stuff to sell stuff. Great place to be, good place to start, but it doesn't scale because you have to then just add more people. So you either scale up with salespeople, 
but you cannot do work automation because if you build your business on this and then you go to automation, you basically re remove all of your relationship. So it's like starting from scratch. So the socialite seller. Now the final one I want to share with you, which is really the place that any business should be pursuing, whether you're a solopreneur or a CEO, this is the space that most businesses can occupy. This is the space that most consultants, most coaches can occupy, and they don't need the influencer numbers, and they don't need to churn and burn and cold pitch people either. It's a sweet spot between those two groups, the relationship people and the buy my stuff people, and they go buy this and people follow it. Uh, it's a great place to occupy. It can, it can scale and it can feed your business. And the great thing about this space is it also elevates you above these two people, these two groups of people, which is the majority of people marketing and promoting their business online. It elevates you above the majority. Are you a thought leader or an influencer? No, but you are the equivalent of an influencer to the people below. So you elevate yourself away from this group and you are seen as what we call an expert authority, an expert in demand. Somebody who's leveraged their, set, their identity, uh, built an audience that supports their business yeah, so it's an audience that's big enough to support their business. They have less of an emphasis on relationship. All of their relationship is done through content. Their relationship's done through uh, inter interactions at scale. Um, it's still not automated because automating takes you down to the bottom, but it's a, it's a way to build relationships, build that level of authority, differentiate yourself from all of the people further down and build trust and confidence. And the great thing is because of that, people expect to pay more. So if you're looking to market yourself online, you're looking to promote your services online, you can have a choice. Do you go to the top of the tree and invest hours and hours and hours and hours, thousands of pounds to try and build this mass following? Do you go to the bottom of the ladder and just pitch and buy my stuff, buy my stuff? Or do you ascend the level of authority to get to the middle ground where you are elevated above the masses and you've built a crowd that your business, that supports your business and you can leverage and make more money? For some of you watching this, you go, that sounds great, but what, what's the size of that audience? For some of you, the size of that audience could be 200 people. For some of you, it could be 1,000 people. It's not about the number. It's about the quality of how they perceive you as an expert and a leader in your field. It's whether they understand that you have the answers to their problems. And if that's 200 people, you do really well. If that's 10,000 people, you do really well. My challenge to you, on the five levels of authority, where do you want to be? I'd encourage you to become the expert in demand.